Well, I've been the mayor for four years. And when I started to be the mayor four years ago, my vision was to bring the city into some fiscal stability, to work on our city services, and to uh, help the, the staff become more professional and feel like they are uh, doing a good job for the city and its residents. So my report card is uh, we, have, we have created good financial policies and good reserve funds for our city. We have created city services that are more friendly and open. And the city staff is really working hard to connect with the community and be a good customer service base. So moving forward into the next four years, I want to continue to make sure that the taxpayers' dollars are well spent in the community. And I want to make sure that we are providing services and programs so that the community feels included uh, in our city. And there's, there's so much more to do for Linwood. You know, light rail is coming. The train will come. It might be a little late, but it will come. And so we need to manage our growth. And then we need to um, make sure that we're building a city that is, uh, has good infrastructure, good roads, and that we have a place where everybody feels uh, welcome in our city. So I just, I want to continue what we have already built and get better and stronger and safer. Thanks. Well, if I knew how to make the perfect harmony, I might be an angel. <laughs> uh, it is very, it's very important to me that we continue to work on being a welcoming and inclusive and safe city. And that's for everybody. If there's somebody who doesn't want to work and live here peacefully, then we need to help them move away. And so part of, part of working in harmony, the word that you have chosen, is to make sure that first, the foundation of people's health and safety is addressed. And so we will be doing that with our police department, our new fire organization, making sure that we have healthy options for um, our, our people, and that we are providing places where people can learn and where they can uh, live and where they can play. And I think we also need to be adding some more cultural events. We already have silos of communities doing their events, and there is an outcry for more of that. People want to come together and learn from each other and celebrate with each other. So our first problem is space. We don't have a lot of good open space in Linwood. Uh, but with, when we develop our city center, we are developing a large city park. So we'll finally have uh, some space where people can gather. Well, thank you for sending me that question in advance because I have an answer. <laughs> I had to research the answer. <laughs> uh, as the Korean community knows, there are over 240 small Korean American owned businesses in Linwood. That's a lot. And that is one reason that we started our sister city uh, program, which we now have our sister city in Damyang, Korea. And a reason for Sister City is for educational exchange, cultural exchange, and economic development. So it was important to me to figure out how can we bring the Korean businesses together specifically and help them be economically sound. With regard to the minimum wage, Seattle voted in the $15 minimum wage, uh, and that was voted in by their city council. SeaTac voted in a minimum wage. That was voted in by the people. So there's different ways that minimum wage comes to be in a city. There is nothing that city council or I have talked about with regard to doing that, to, to, to raise the minimum wage here in Linwood. We do not have the B&O tax. Uh, the charges for businesses is the headcount 
uh, employee fee, uh, and then of course their business license fee. So that being said, the good news for I think probably most of our Korean businesses, I think they're family owned and have relatives that work in the business. And if the $15 minimum wage came to be voted in by council or the people in this city, it will not apply to family businesses. So if the wife owns the business, of course the wife owns the business, and the husband works in the business, you would not have to pay your husband or your son or your daughter or your aunt or your cousin that, that higher wage. So I, I, small businesses can probably control that internally. But I've also was told about a year ago that there are Korean businesses moving into Linwood because of that minimum wage in Seattle. So I want to make sure to welcome them and make sure that they are successful. Well, I think uh, let's talk about the word change. Change is very difficult for many people. But the only thing that's constant is change. So we have a lot of people who live in Linwood who want to have um, small town, they don't want to have, they have small town mentality. And we are growing towards more of a city sophistication because we are growing, as you have noted. And we, we will change and Linwood will look different. So how do I embrace the people in, in our city and help them move towards this different type of city that we're going to have, which is going to be much more uh, robust and big and tall. We're allowed to build 30-story buildings in Linwood. It's not exactly affordable yet. Maybe 7 to 15 stories is. Uh, but we need to uh, make sure that the people have a place so we protect their neighborhoods. Uh, and then we keep all of our growth and our density in our city center uh, area. And I think that will serve both people. But my main issue is change. And there's a lot of people who fight change, but there's many people coming in who want change. And our demographics are changing. We're getting young families coming in with their children who can't afford to live in Seattle anymore. And, they, and they're coming to Linwood. And then we have an aging population who wants to age in place. They want to stay near their home or in their home. So we have these young families and our seniors uh, that, are, uh, that we need to embrace and make sure that they, they feel included and, and safe in our city. Thank you. So my biggest message is please vote. Right. There are 38,000 people who live in Linwood. 16,000 are registered voters. In the last election, only 5,000 people voted. We can't have apathy anymore in this city. It's a very important time for people to be involved in their city, in their government. and. And so I just hope that people will feel like they uh, want to be engaged because it is a time of change and that I want your voice at the table. I want to make sure that I'm hearing what your needs are in your communities and as a whole city. So please engage, please study the candidates and please, please vote and vote for me. <laughs> <laughs>